Have you had issues trying to get into Hearts of Iron 4? Maybe you just don't know what to do. And you're looking at all the stuff that, that's here. And you're getting a little overwhelmed. Well, then this is a stream for you, all right? Now buckle up, buck buckos and buckets, all right? I am vaccinated, caffeinated, and freshly masturbated. So let's grab Hoi Form by the balls. Consensually, of course. Let's just dive on in. All right, now, I'm going to teach you what I do, what I would do. Just, I'm a lazy bastard, so what I'm going to teach you is going to be very easy. You can easily win like this and even get some decently hard achievements, you know, like this. So first things first, we're just going to click and drag, boom, and just use your mouse and right click on the army, boom, everyone's in the army. By the way, I recommend Germany because it is the easiest country to play. You pretty much set the pace and paste. You set the pace, yes. It's like glue. So, yeah, you set the pace of what's going to happen, when, and you honestly are very powerful. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the flag, select the national focus, Rhineland. That is what we're going to do first. If we wanted to be a sweaty tryhard, we would just justify on pull and manually. Hey Parker, what's going on? But we are not going to be a sweaty tryhard. We are going to be a noob. So we're just going to take things nice and easy. And I'm going to turn down the music. Hold on a second. Okay, music's being a little weird. There we go. There, not as loud. First thing we're going to do, scrap the tanks. We honestly, tanks are very micromanagey, very good, but we don't need them. All right, uh, support equipment, yes. Toad artillery, yes. Truck, yes. Fighters, yes. Close air support, yes. Tactical bombers, we'll keep. Yeah, I think we'll keep them. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to assign some some military factories. Anti-air is always something you want to have. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, trains and armored cars. Just one factory of each for now. Like, that's the thing, like, you... There's a lot of stuff that you can and should produce. If I had to say, like, the two things you should produce over everything else, guns and then artillery. And then if you have the spare mills, anti-air, all right? Those three alone, you can do a lot with, all right? Now what we're going to do is go into our free civilian factories. We are going to click civilians and we are going to build a few factories, all right? Because, well, that's our industrial base. By making more civs, we meet, we were able to add more construction ability. So that means we become more powerful as the game progresses. Think of that as investing in your economy. Next thing, your research slots. Always go in here, engineering, electronic mechanical engineering, industry, basic machine tools and construction one. Those are your bread and butter. Make sure your industry tab is pretty much all filled out. All the machine tools, all the industry, all the construction. Don't do those. Maybe do those if you're running low on resources. Same thing with fuel, oil and rubber. All right. Make sure to do these focus or these are research projects because they give you extra research speed and that's always nice. Uh, whenever you can get the radio tech stuff too because it just gives you a nice passive bonus. And what should we do with our spare research slot? Well, I am going to put it into artillery. Trust me, you kind of want to go down the artillery branch right here, the middle one. And when you have time, the AA. Uh, we still have some more free mills, so I'm just going to put 15 in guns and never have to worry about guns again, really. Uh, bu bu let's put one into artillery and one into anti-air. There we go. That looks good for a good start of the game. So now we are going to finally, we finally got most of our issues all figured out. So what should we do? Well, I think the easiest thing to figure out is the Navy. All right, just build subs. 
literally just build submarines, all right? If you only use one thing in the naval tab, just research the basic torpedo and then go down this. Boom, you're done. Uh, you might want to do some landing craft if, you know, you're invading, but that's an if. Uh, air is next. Just go fighters, close air support, tactical bombers if you want to, but those aren't really needed. Just fighters and close air support, and even fighters are kind of optional. Really, I'd say close air support is the S tier, fighters are A tier, tactical bombers are B tier, and everything else, just don't touch, please. It's just not worth it. So yeah, when you're actually using your Navy, I know I'm kind of jumping back and forth, but like I said, lots of information, and I'm trying to get through it in a timely po way possible. Set your troops to convoy rating, give them an admiral, the highest rank one will do, and you're good to go. Boom, done. Literally just set them to convoy rating and wherever, and boom. That's all you need to do. Now, um, the Air Force. The Air Force is a little bit more tricky. So certain aircraft can only do certain missions. So right here we have close air support. Actually, let's find, yeah. I'm going to just crank up the speed a little, and so we have all three of our planes in the same airport. You got fighters. They can do two missions, air superiority and interception. Air superiority means they'll fly up and they'll try and prevent enemy planes from doing their uh, stuff. Yeah, they'll, they'll fight enemy fighters and, you know, if there's other planes in the air, they'll take those out, but they're mostly going after the enemy fighters. Now, interception, on the other hand, is like if you're getting bombed and or your fuel is an issue, interception is the way to go. Your planes will stay on the ground until they detect the planes, and then they'll go up and shoot them down. Now we have close air supports. They really can only do close air support. They can do naval strike and logistics strike and port strike. Close air support, that's on land. Naval strike, that's for attacking ships in the sea. Port strike, those go over land and attack ships in ports. That's honestly a niche one. You don't need to worry about that. And logistic strike is good, but uh, I don't know. I just prefer close air support. Like if nothing else, if you take away nothing else from my air force, just make pure close air support, have them do close air support missions wherever you need them, and they'll do just fine. All right. They have some decent defenses so they can take on fighters pretty reasonably. That's the Navy dealt with. That's the Air Force dealt with, more or less. Like, like I said, I'm just giving you a very bare bones, basic, like this will get you on your way and you'll figure it out as you go. It's like, so I got these planes right here, right click on the air zone, click the missions I want and boom, the fighters are going to do air security and everything else is going to do close air support. Boom. Same thing with the subs. Uh, just only do convoy rating. All right, that's the only mission you need to worry about for your Navy. Look on where you want them to go. Boom, they'll start convoy raiding there. And we just blockaded, sure, uh... What, 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 what did we just blockade? Why am I blanking on the British? Oh my god, how did I blank on the British? Oh, fuck. Alright. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah. The army. Now they're a little bit more advanced. So first things first, we're actually going to switch them to infantry division. Boom. We're only going to use infantry division. Boom. And I'm just going to keep it as the uh, 18 combat with infantry. So nine of these little helmets. And that is your main like backbone of every division. Support artillery, we're going to keep that. Engineer companies, we're going to ditch. Our final division will have artil support artillery, support anti-air, light armored recon company. Uh, legit, no. We're going to have signal companies and we're going to have flamer tanks. Now we don't have access to all that yet, but as we go along in the game, we will. And I'll show you what you need to research to get what. And while we're in this screen, uh, this is your um, logistics screen. So you basically tell, th tell your game, 
hey, I want equipment to be and manpower to be prioritized in garrisons. I prefer prioritizing garrisons, operations, and supply trucks, making upgrades a low priority, and reinforcements a medium. So your, your first things are your garrisons, your operations, and your supply trucks. Very important. You want to keep those running smoothly. Honestly, operations, you could, you know, bump down to medium, but I just don't use operations ever, so it's not really an issue for me. And yeah. Okay, so we're going to break the army up into 24 groups and assign them to a field marshal. We're just right-clicking on this portrait. Boom. Oh, I did that wrong. Now we're going to assign a general. We're just going to assign the best ones. So Rommel and Eric Manstein. We're also going to add Runstite as the field marshal. Now there's a lot of buttons here. And you don't really need to know all of them, okay? The ones I'd say you need to know is the front line, 100%. Now when I unpause, every division in Rommel's army will go to this front line and spread themselves out. And now if I use this button and draw an offensive line, say right here, boom. They, you see the like the tiles lighting up red and green? That indicates the path they're going to take to get to the front line. So they're going to push out in that pattern towards the uh, line I've created. Those are two very important ones. Um, area defense, you just press the button, click on the province that you want to defend and tell them where you want to guard. You could say, I don't want to guard go coastline, air bases, forts, supply hubs and railways or victory points. Honestly, naval bases are the only thing you really want to guard. This is all for single player, by the way. Multiplayer changes everything up, but like I said, you know, you're not learning about that. Another useful one is fallback lines. So say I wanted my line was broken and I had to retreat. I could set a fallback line right here behind the river. And boom, when I unpause, everything designed to that division would line up on that line. It's basically, the front line is when you're against an enemy, an enemy country that you want to kind of supply the line against. And a fallback line is inside your country, I guess the best way to describe it. Uh, you got your naval invasion orders. You just click that, click on a port, which is blue, and then right click on where you want to invade. Boom. You can only do certain divisions at a time. So, and it takes convoys. So keep that in mind. That's a really, something you won't use too often, but it's good to know. Uh, yeah, everything else is kind of like, you don't really need to know about. I'm, I'm hoping I make, I'm making sense. I've already spent 15 minutes, you know, trying to talk you through as quickly as possible, but let's unpause. And as you can see, they're all moving towards the front line. Well, Rommel's army is. Now, if I were to take I did not want to press that button. Manstein's army and use the fallback line against this river. Boom. They're now going to move where I set the fallback line. And now, because I want to guard Russia, no divisions are assigned. They're staying right at the fallback line. Their first order is what they will uh, continue to follow with, even if you draw new orders. So if I wanted them on this front line, I'd hit control, left click, and now they're assigned to that. So they're going to go there. This is to delete orders. Left click on what orders you want to delete or just right click and hit right click on that button and it'll delete every order that that general's army has been assigned. Now as Germany, you want to keep training a bunch of troops because focuses are locked to how much manpower you have in the field. So, yeah. Just going to train a few. Set them to high priority, so that way we can get them out ASAP. Now, Rhineland is done. We're going to go down... Hmm. Let's go down... Naval rearmament. Yeah. Let's make sure our Navy's up to decent specs. Yeah, this is your naval production spot. Every dockyard is assigned to a ship. 
and it takes a while to build ships. Just build submarines, all right? If you have surface ships already made, like Germany, like this whole thing is just surface fleet ships, go ahead and use them, you know, just set them to convoy raiding in some random place, and if they die, they die. I hate, I know it sounds cruel, but it is what it is. Submarines are just too good to ignore. Now I'll teach you how to make proper submarines eventually. Naval effort, because I want even more dockyards. Just to really crank out these ships. Now I'm just going to set maximum dockyards to every ship in the line. So I don't have to think about it and micromanage it. And after that, we are going to make more subs. Just an infinite amount of 1936 subs. And some convoys. Convoys are used for trading and also for naval invasions. So they're pretty important. You want at least a few. Hundred. E. Now this is important. Ugh. Don't have much to say right now. Just kind of letting the time tick by. Ugh. Choking on my own throat. Ugh, you're making me too excited. You're making me too talkative all at once. So now what are we going to do? Well, I think we're going to go down army innovations. We could go down the industrial path, but, you know, I don't want to right now. So army innovations, it it is. Uh, Yeah. Now we're going on pause again. How's our troop training going? If you want troops in the field ASAP and they're not fully done training, as these are about 70% done, boop. Now they're instantly in the field. As usual, click on them, right click, sign them to the field marshal, give them a general. We're just going to put them on the French border because we need to do that. Research has been done for a few things, dispersed. There, there's a whole debate online of what's better concentrated or dispersed i'm just doing dispersed just because i know it works so you know use whatever you feel like and radio radio is a good tech to have like get it as soon as possible it's really nice and so yeah what i just did was i had an army already in the field right these 14 divisions are on the french border they have an order these troops are training right well, because there's an order for this army, I can just click this little circle right here, click on like the general's portrait or the order, and it'll sign them. Notice how it's pink, same color as the general's little outline portrait. That means when these troops are done training, they will automatically assign themselves to this general and the order that he has. All right. I hope that is clear. And if it's not, I am truly sorry, but I am absolutely atrocious at explaining things. Really, the only reason I'm doing this is for my friend Josh, who's like, I want to get into this, but man, it's just tough. And it's like, all right, well, here's a starting point. So what this is, a starting point. So you're like, I'm not overwhelmed. I, I'm not, you know, just confused. There's a lot of mechanics, lots of intricacies, but this does work and it works well. You don't really need to put too much thought or effort into it. It just, in the name of Todd Howard, it just works. All right, we got another research slot done. By the way, good tip. Space bar, look in the top right. Every time I press space, it unpauses or pauses the game. Handy tip to have. Now, what am I going to do with this research slot? Uh, good question. I'm going to get infantry uh, support weapons. That'll just make my infantry divisions way more effective. So keep training infantry divisions for the field. Do, do, do. There we go. Nice 24. Now, I would advise just having 24 divisions under each general. You can go over it, but I wouldn't recommend it as you get combat penalty. 
It's a thing you can do, but I would not advise it. Treaty with the USR, USSR, sure, let's go for it. And let's deploy these troops early. They're going to be watching the French, making sure they're not up to anything sneaky. You know, you got to keep an eye on the French. Otherwise, they might sneak up behind you and beat you with a sack full of shit. Terrible way to go. Games are concluded. Okay, I forgot to mention political power. I completely forgot about it. So this thing means, hey, you have 150 political power or so. You might want to use it. Now, what should you spend it on? Well, there's a lot of different political advisors, theorists, what, you know, what have you. A good thing to check is your political advisors and look through them if you see like a silent workhorse or anyone else that increases political power they're a good first buy because that just gives you more money it's like an investment in the future so I'm going to actually pay for that um, silent workhorse and I'm also going to go for Rudolf Hess first among equals also political power gain plus 15% and we've already just invested in our future boom now we're really raking in the dough. Uh, a good second uh, pick would be, say, a general for your high command. Pick one of these areas and be like, all right, what do I want? Now, I would say probably the most valuable is army experience of the experience types. So I'm going to get an infantry expert. Makes my infantry divisions more effective and gives me taking army experience, which is going to be needed to make, to fill out doctrines. I'll get to that a little bit later on. Right now, we can't do anything about it. So it's a little bit inconsequential. Getting a third uh, army group out. And eventually I'll get a fourth. Eventually. Okay, actually, let's start training up the fourth, or at least, you know, planning it out. There we go. We're going to have him on the Czechoslovakia board. Might as well. Prioritize those divisions, please, and thank you. We wanted to really get these cranked out so we can start moving on with our focus tree. Ah, and we can do Anschluss. Do this as, as early as possible because it is literally, you see Austria right here? It's just going to join you. No war, no nothing. It's just, everything about them just belongs to you. Oh, I should probably uh move that down. There we go. My B. Uh, B, okay. Uh, there. Like, I was looking for a wrong button. So yeah, right here is your political power, which is what I was talking about, but you couldn't quite see. Well, uh, stability is important to keep high. You want to keep it above 50% at all times. And same with war support. Keep it above 50% while you're at war. Actually, stability and war support really only matter at war, but they do help outside of war too, just not as much. Uh, we're going to go for radio detection next. That's also a good buff to have. And our Navy is getting done, you know, cranking out the last bit of surface ships, and then we'll never touch them again. So I hope they enjoy their battleships and their destroyers, because, you know, they're going to be pointless. Uh, it's a little bit ahead of time for the uh, industry. Hey, chill, chill. All right, so we're, we're a little ahead of time, but we will start researching the industry. Just because industry is that strong. The more equipment you're able to churn out, the more factories you're able to build, the better off you'll just be. It's that simple. More factories equal more likely to win. We're going to reassert Eastern claims. And also, we have some free military factories. So what should we do with them? Well, we're struggling a little with... Uh, Support equipment. This number next to a red uh, cross, that indicates that you're missing that much equipment. So we're missing 1,460 support equipment for our current divisions. I'm gonna tack on a few extra military factories to deal with that. And I'm also going to put the rest into 
Fighters, yeah. Peace and Air Force is never a bad thing to invest in. And we got unassigned divisions, so let's do something about that and bring them here. Just transfer them to the infantry division, trust me. All right, everything else is useless. You don't really need it. Boy, you, and there we go. Now, assign you a general and unpause. The Anschluss of Austria. We have grown. Yugoslavia is questioning us. Let's put an end to that questioning. All right, no one likes a tattletale. Now, 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 now. We have plenty of political power, so I'm going to get. Yeah, I'm going to get Rommel, and I'm going to get. Uh, Runstein. There we go. Now we got plenty of army experience trickling in. 0.3 a day, which is very great, very fantastic. And I'm even going to get a chief of army. I'm going to go offense because we will be attacking more often than we'll be defending. Now take this to army and just deploy them into the field. You really need more troops in the field more than you need them trained. All right. Lots of times you don't really need your troops trained. You can just deploy them early, get them in the field if you need them, and then train them later. That is what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm going to tra start training some now. So as you can see, the regular they gave a plus 25% modifier in combat. That sounds good, right? Hang on. Well, we got Memel right here. Yay. Going to demand Sudets and Lin. What was I doing? Oh yeah, training. So they get a plus 25 modifier because they are level three regular. However, this unit has minus 25 because they are one, level one, green. At level two, they have ne neither a benefit nor a debuff. Now, you can train out this greenness, all right? Just by pressing shift and then clicking on this button, they will train until they're level three, all right? So they don't waste that much equipment training. I'm gonna do it for every division or army group that is full. We have more free civilian factories. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of synthetics because we need oil and rubber as the Germans since we don't have access to that much of it. Doctrines are available. What doctrine should you go down? Honestly, just go fi superior firepower. Go down superior superior firepower, delay, mobile defense, go to integrated and shock and awe. It's just nice and easy. It will lead to W's. And isn't W's what you want? Uh, let's finish off that. 20, so 15. There. This is all the troops we're going to be training for a little bit anyway. Because, well, we don't really need more than this. Right now. So I'm going to unpause once again. And, yeah. Wait until they are able to be deployed in the field. Boom. Now I'm going to exercise this army, too. Let them get all trained up. We are running a little lower on manpower than I'd like, but we can fix that later. Make sure they get all the equipment they need. Because, you know, you can't see out without any equipment. You can't do war proper without guns. Hey, what's going on, Alex? I'm doing good, Parker. How about you? You doing good? Uh, woof. Well, support equipment. Running a little bit behind more than I would like. Almost got our full army group for the last army. And then we'll be done with the screen. For now, anyway. Oh, hang on. Unplug my headphones. There we go. Now I can hear. Deploy those. Come on. I don't know why my game sometimes doesn't let me use the spacebar to pause the game while I'm streaming. Uh, what should I do? Well, 
That's a good question. That's a good question. What should you do when you're all out of stuff to research? Oh, right. I haven't done signal companies. I want to add signal companies, so I should research those. Machine tools is done. How about infantry equipment? Uh, not quite. Not really. Huh. What should I do? Uh, let's get excavation then. More resources is never a bad thing. Alright, so let's unpause. Ooh, we have some political power to spend. Let's go ground support for extra air superiority. Never a bad thing. And as for cheap army, well, we don't have enough for donuts. That'll just make our subs way better. And unpause. I think I'm quite annoying on your Discord. Nah, you're fine. You're fine. I don't think you're that annoying. And we just claim the Sudetenland. And we're going to do the first Vienna award. And Hungary is going to get a little bit of the checks. Three mills three. Let's put them on support equipment. Yeah. The Munich agreement. Or should I say the Munich disagreement? Ho ho ho. All right, there we go. All of our troops are deployed and exercising the whole three. So hopefully they don't just, you know, die in combat. Cause that would be not ideal in the slightest. Yeah, this is a tutorial for complete beginners. All right, like you're brand new to the game. This is what I am telling you. It's like what you need to know, what you don't really need to know. Just kind of like separating the information for you. So it's like, oh, I need to make sure I know this or I don't need to know that. So honestly, there's a lot in Hearts of Iron, which is like, it's cool to have the option, but why though? Instructions done. Uh, let's get some excavation. Uh, can't really do anything else because it's way ahead of time. Let's do uh, oil refined processing. Yeah. Never can go wrong with more oil. Uh, more political power. So let's go with Heinz Guderen. The Blitzkrieg Theorist. Ooh, doctrine's available. Actually, so we're going to go in the Officer Corps. Hang on, hang on. Need to pause. Now, you can get a lot of different bonuses in here. So, for the army, I would 100% recommend Smoke and Fire. If you're going to be on the offensive, Smoke and Fire is great. If you're on the defensive, Static Warfare is amazing. Alright, so I'm going to go Smoke and Fire. Unpause. As for the rest of the stuff, uh, bold text could one. Engineering school is fine too. And here, quick on improvisation is good or like professional officer core, depending on, you know, what you want to get into. If you're aggressive on the attack or uh, what's it called? You just want a little more experience and command power slash less to spend on doctrines. Remember when I had 20 hours on Germany, 1936, and I attacked Netherlands, 25... 20 minutes of fighting the Netherlands? Boys. That's a... That's a yikes. A little bit of yikes. It's not gonna lie. Uh, hmm. How's the Navy coming along? Okay, we're almost done with the ships that... Never mind. Maybe not. Never mind. Let's see if we can start churning out just a few of them. Because I don't want to deal with this anymore. Just slowly waiting until the next focus is done. The 3rd of October. And so about a month we'll have the last heavy ship out. So when are you going to do a multiplayer? Shut the fuck up you little bitch. Uh, I don't know. Eventually, maybe, who knows. Oh. For whatever reason, there's three troops that are assigned to that small front line that I don't remember making. So we're just going to assign them to the main Sudetenland one and just delete that. 150 political power once again. Uh, let's go up to war economy. Or economy is always a good thing. It just makes it so you have less consumer goods. 
Consumer goods. Let's squeeze on them. Chickasaki is ours. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, consumer goods, as you can see, they're 20%. Consumer goods are what are used by your population. So, like, say you have 100 civilian factories, right? And you're using 20 for consumer goods. That means 20%, 20 of your civilian factories you cannot use, all right? They're just sidelined because they're used for consumer goods. Now, if I were to bump up to total mobilization, I'd get 10 of those back. 10 of those for me to do whatever with. So always a good idea to get your economy rolling ASAP. Now, I'm going to use the I'm going to do the four year plan, and I'm going to adjust the front line with the uh, lead or something. What happened to my front line? Oh, they went against hungry of all places. Whatever, assign them to. Poland, take the original front line that's uh, got Rommel in it. See this little dot? If you right click on it and drag it, you can extend or decrease the front line. And that also works for a fallback line. So it's just handy to know, you know, when you need to adjust something like that. Our two of our army groups are all done exercising. Good, good. France and Britain announce the alliance. Oh no. Oh no, what shall we do? Hmm. Let's get rubber production and fuel refining. Excavation's done, yay? Hmm. <laughs> oh, let's just get military, please. Sure, why not? Might as well. And we got doctrines available, so let's get delay. Roll on down. Love the music and background. Thanks. I'm trying not to play music that annoys people, so, you know, well, that's not annoying you. Almost done with our ships. Getting there. Let's just put a few more on that destroyer and just start churning them out a little bit faster. Oh, I'm so tired. Sleeping at my, at my dorm is an absolute nightmare. I can only get like five hours of sleep every night. Four year plan, and now I'm just going to go a little bit aggressive and Danziger War. We're all prepped, so let's just go on in. Going to make it so we have three synthetic factories, you know, everywhere in these four regions. Why? Because they are 80% infrastructure, so they build faster. And also because of. Uh, they're really industrialized, so they have more building slots. Ugh. We're going to do a computing machine for faster research, because why not? Oh, my time is going fast? Uh, that's because I have a uh, five speed. Yeah, that's why it's going that fast. Like, if your computer can't handle five speed, just slow it down. Slow it down to whatever speed, you know, your computer can take. It is what it is, unfortunately. Some computers can handle it, some computers cannot. Prove the sale of fighters wrong. For sure, why not? Now, I'm going to do a higher and more. Prince of Terror. Non core manpower plus 2%. Uh, damage to garrisons minus 25, so less manpower and equipment go into garrisons. Now, non core manpower, what does that mean? Well, since like Berlin or Brandenburg has always been a part of Germany, it is central to Germany. It is a core of Germany. That means we are able to access all the manpower in the state and all the factories and all the resources. So that is what it means by a core. A non-core means we have to garrison it. Hang on, let me explain this and then I'll go to war. So like, because we have taken over Czechoslovakia. There is resistance. We have to suppress that resistance, right? And we get a small percentage of their manpower and resources and factories. All right. The more compliant they are with us, the longer we've been there, the, the better we make their lives. 
the more compliant they are, which means the more factories, the more manpower, the more re resources and whatnot we get from them. Oof. I'm tired. I'm, hopefully it's going to be a quick stream. Ugh. Probably going to s just fall asleep after this. Ugh. Give me a sec. Ugh. I even took a little Dr. Pepper just to get the caffeine in me. All right, we're going to declare war. Actually, no, we are not. Rommel's got a front line. Let's give Monstein a front line. Oh, no. I forgot which army group he was. Let's have Manstein go there. And we'll have Maximilian go up here. With them. Hang on. Ugh. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Put them on with this little arrow. So this little arrow tells the general, hey, I've approved the plan. Go do it. This red button will tell them to stop their plan. Yeah, I didn't expect a lot of people to be joining on stream because most people that play Hoi, they, they know what they're doing. Or at least a decent amount. Anyway. Uh, let's just unpause. Declare war. We have our orders. Let's go. And let's just roll over them. Easy peasy. Honestly, you don't need the Air Force, but it's one of those things where it's like, eh, it helps a lot. Now, a good thing to have for your subs is just be like, hey, you know, tell them I want 10 submarines in each area. Oh, I should probably give them an admiral. That probably would help them. And split off when they're damaged. So make sure split off when damage is enabled. And also make sure that automatic reinforcement is enabled when they have 10 size. So that means it just, they keep their effective size up to par. Now, ooh, got a juicy encirclement. Ass. Oh, and we have some free uh, mills. So let's just add a few more to artillery and AA. Focus. What are we going to do for focus? Let's go autarky. Improve our industry. So if I'm going to be honest with you, of the four branches here in this game, Army, Navy, Air Force, Espionage. Ignore Espionage when you're a beginner. You don't need to know that. It helps a lot, but I find it a massive pain and you don't need it. You really don't. Air Force, very helpful, very strong. You can ignore it if you want. If you have, you're having trouble micromanaging everything, ignore the planes, you'll be good to go. Navy, kind of important. You really have to know that, at least a decent amount. And army, well, if you can't do that, you can't play this game. I'm sorry to say. Then pause again and watch Poland just absolutely disintegrate. Push. Push, 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 push. We're going to get Decimetric Radar. We're also going to push in there. What? Why are you... No one told you to... Ah. Anyway. There we go. Closing that pocket. Poland is almost done. It would be faster if I used the Air Force and the Espionage, but like I said, I don't feel like it. Bro, the past three days, I've had five hours of sleep every night. I know that it's like... What, what are you talking about? That's like nothing. That's like... That's like for babies. For me, that's like no sleep. I make it a priority to get at least eight hours of sleep every single night. Sleep is like a foundation for your health. So without good sleep, you can't do anything, right? Military police is done. Uh, nothing to do there. Let's go improved infantry equipment. Mills, 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 mills. Let's just get some extra fighters, sure. Modify our doctrine. Let's get mobile defense. 
about to take Warsaw, which means... There we go. We capitulated. We got a little bit of their gear because we capitulated them. So that is very nice. We're going to go Herman Goring work. Or some more civs for free. Doctrines available. Let's go... Oh, yeah. I did not mention air or navy doctrines. Air Force, go down battlefield support. Okay. Trust me, it's the best. Same with trade interdiction. Just go down trade interdiction, okay? Go down this path first and then... Whatever you have with leftover Navy experience wise, just go with this. Uh, free mills. Hmm. Uh, uh let's put it in close air support. Available. That real quick. Boom. Now, all you troops that were over on the uh, Eastern Front, come back here and let's really fuck up the French day. Industry concern. Sure, cheaper industry techs. Wait for our army to group up. And let's draw front lines. You just want to invade into German or Belgium. Here we want to invade the Netherlands. Where are you? Oh. I guess you can draw a line there. We're not pushing. Level 10 forts. Forts are bad to push into. Do not push into forts. Oh, uh, those are the Netherlands. Whoopsie. But you. Ah. Push into Luxembourg. No, I'm just going to have you all push. And declare war on everything. Declare. Declare. And declare. Yo, my army, go! Oh, uh, Belgian join the army or the allies. Boo! No one cares. You suck up. Uh, Luxembourg's dead. Damn. Yeah, this is going to be a very short stream. I'm going to end it once I capitulate France, because, like, as you can see, this stuff works. This is the, the division template that I'm using right now. I would add AA, signal, get rid of engineer, add light armored. And what I'd add in there is tanks, or flamer tanks. In order to get flamer tanks, you need to research engineering too, and then you get that technology to do that, okay? Well, like I said, those are optional and you really don't need them. You can do just fine with it. What's going on? Why aren't you able to push? Best match radar is done. Let's go with... Fourth pump come equipment. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Let's just delete every order. So just like generals, field marshals can do the exact same thing. We've got a field marshal, front line, push down here in this general area, go. They'll now spread themselves out among army groups and just attack. Be a bit more coordinated with their push. Hopefully, anyway. Hmm. Fuel refining is done. Uh, and boring work. Chill, chill. Game, chill. Recognize Bulgarian claims, sure. Uh, uh, uh. Let's just do, you know, industry, sure. KDF wagon. Always a good choice. Invite Italy to the faction. Yes, please. Just doctrines available. Go dispersed. And while I'm in the screen, grab your entire air force, put them there, put them in northern France, and just have them go ham. There. Now Italy is going to help us attack. Yay! Construction, yes, please. Oh, I'm actually having a tough time breaking through uh, Belgium. 
manually push. So yeah, you can just like right click on the place that you want to invade. It just makes it like, so like, I select these troops, right click on Brussels, they'll attack that. They'll move wherever I want if I right click something. Good to know for the future, eh? More refineries. Oh, I am out of manpower. Holy shit. Okay. Let's... Maybe I'm too tired. Thank you. Uh, I love the Mario Mushroom too. But, um... I'm gonna be honest. This is why you garrison your coast, alright? Just take, like, a cheap division, like, your infantry, and just have them defending the coast okay i am too tired i'm going to leave i'm so sorry this is probably a terrible tutorial but hopefully it gives you a starting point okay there's plenty of other good t people out there yeah like i i did not garrison that's a rookie mistake um i'm tired that's really all i can say i have zero cognition right now um yeah i hope you did enjoy if you I'm going to leave this save file up so maybe I can fix it later. Yeah, I'm only half capitulated, so I can do something about that. Might come back to it next stream. I might not. Uh, seriously, I am so sorry for this, but if you did learn at least something to make it go have better, bye. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>